Hello Indie Warriors, Literary Rose here with I Dream of Indie to offer you our review of Redo on the Nintendo Switch. Redo is a 2D, dark, metroidvania, souls-like, more on that later, developed and published by Robson Pavia. You play an unnamed female character in a dystopian world taken over by biomachines, or machine monsters as I like to call them. You have existed in this world for an undisclosed amount of time, and you enter the story when she receives a message from potentially another human being, a rare, perhaps impossible encounter in this world. But the trek to this meeting is filled with machine monsters waiting to slice, roast, and explode you. As you fight these monsters, you can find note fragments around the world that reveal bits and pieces of the story. And that about covers the story. While there is more for you to uncover, part of the allure of this title is fighting your way through and picking up the disjointed plot bits which you slowly pull together, like a detective with too much evidence and not enough red string. Now, let's go back to the gameplay, because it's an interesting mix that I don't think I've encountered in this particular fashion before. The map is like a metroidvania with many different paths, some of which are accessible immediately, and others that are blocked until you obtain a particular item, and then you'll need to backtrack in order to fully explore the paths that you had to skip earlier. But unlike a metroidvania, there is no map, which I must say is one of my first criticisms of the game. I understand the mood and atmosphere of Redo is supposed to be oppressive and confusing, tying to its Lovecraft light origins. But it quickly became frustrating, dying again and again, to respawn super far away from where I was, and then backtrack all over again. This issue is further exacerbated by the saving system, which only lets you save at particular spots in the game. And once you do save, you get all your health back, but all the enemies you defeated have respawned. So like soldiers, if you saw that review, except soldiers had a map, so not my cup of tea. All right, so you travel around the dark world of machine monsters and sentient doll people. Did I forget to mention that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dodging and attacking as you can. Enemies have distinct attack patterns and they hit hard. So you want to take your time to learn their patterns, which you inevitably will learn with enough deaths. Your first hits go towards the block the enemy has, which varies depending on the enemy. And that's clearly stated for you. Every enemy kind of has like a numerical count above their head that tells you what's their block and what's their health. So there's a little bit of math in here for you math lovers. Some enemies you can remove their block within the first hit. And once you remove that block, it stuns them. And once the enemy is stunned, well, you can go to town. Other enemies have a lot of block, so you wanna dodge or you can bait them into attacking. Each time an enemy attacks, their block goes down a bit. So some enemies can be baited enough that they eventually just stun themselves and then you jump in to hopefully finish the job. This is where I'd say the Souls-like influence comes in, the unforgiving difficulty of Redo. Health is hard to get, enemies hit like tanks and go at you again and again and again, and of course, you have very specific areas you are allowed to save if you can even make it there. And if you choose to save, you respawn everything. Your character starts with a melee attack, but as you explore the world, you can find different items and weapons to help you along your journey. There's a riot shield, a machine gun, a stun gun, a grenade launcher, increases to ammo. These have limited ammo, but you can refill by defeating enemies or destroying crates. There's also some light platforming. Uh, your jump has a very consistent range, so once you get a hang of it, you won't really mess up any jumps. As you can probably tell, I found Redo very challenging, and I would even argue too challenging. However, I want to make some concessions. First, as a reviewer, I need to play the game enough and so far as to review it properly, so there is a part of me that wants to go, 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 because we gotta get shit done. But also, in my heart of hearts, I am not the kind of gamer that revels in difficult games, in dying again and again until I get good and ooh, the thrill of achievement. I don't get that feeling. Instead, 
I get the anger of time wasted. And even if we discarded these two biases I hold, I still think Redo could have used some adjusted difficulty options. If the game is so hard that I'm stuck replaying the same 2-3 to three areas ad infinitum, I'm no longer engaged. It's no longer fun. Being boring or not fun is the worst thing a game can do. And while I was really enjoying the art style, the premise, the maps, and the combat, that enjoyment can only last so long in the face of unrelenting failure. And failure without guidance, without explanation. I went around the map so much looking for a new route, or maybe an item that I needed that would help me progress, and I don't think I should have been expected to crawl in the dark so much. Give some kind of indications of where to go, of what to do, especially if you won't even give me a map to help me get my bearings. As I mentioned before, the 2D pixel art style is fantastic. It's a treat for the eyes, and honestly, it was one of the features that first drew me to the game. Redo is a very good game, despite all my criticisms. The mechanics are strong, solid, the game runs excellent on the Switch, the art style is gorgeous, and the developers have maintained a dark atmosphere that is intriguing, that invites the player to explore and find out more about this strange world. But when you make unforgiving gameplay, you run the risk of turning players away, and there are only so many redos I'm willing to attempt. Thank you so much for supporting clickbait free content here at I Dream of Indie. We would now like to take a moment to shout out our brave indie warriors and legends that help to make this channel possible. At the Indie Warriors tier, we have Bill, Christian Cruz, Adriana Amato, CJR, PSC, Julian Colbus, Jesse, Ray Lynn, Marky Mint, Dave Hart, Peekaboo, Lex Noyle, Strict Nine, Sheik Geek, and Solaru C. At the Indie Legends tier, we have Jen Rose, Larkison, Mitchell Hall, Skeptism, Nathan Moore, Chris Jackson, Mr. W, Blue Francis 14, The Beefarinis, Business Cody, Chiron, Jace Glover, King of the Hatch, Ophidian mind and Lord Metroid. Thank you so much for everything that you do for independent developers, publishers, and for I Dream of Indie. Everybody else head down to the description box below. Let's defeat the gaming echo chamber and bring a voice to the voiceless ones in gaming.